Next up, we're going to introduce the rotation, and then we're going to set the mast, which is also going to have a rotation. So um, buckle your seat belts. Um, so we already have a plane that we can use for the rotation. So that part's easy. Then we just need to do the same rotational function that you guys are already used to. Um, so let's do that same thing where we're going to work backwards. We're going to go to intersect, or I'm sorry, uh, transform. We're going to go to Euclidean. And we're going to do rotate, um, but we can do a couple different types of rotates. I think so far we've only needed to use rotate in plane. Um, so this is going to ask us for the geometry, the angle, and the plane. Um, the plane is going to be our perp frame. That's that. The geometry is obviously going to be this. Um, and you can already see that it's rotating at 90 degrees out. Um, <clears throat> And then we just need to set the angle. So uh, let's move that out of the way a little bit. I get kind of picky about how my wires are going. Um, OK, so we just need to set the angle. We're going to go to math, um, trig, and we're going to say radians. And then we're going to put in a slider that says 0 to it starts at the top, right? So we actually want to do um, negative 90 to 90. So this is going to go from one side, which is sort of all the way down on the ground, like that, all the way up and out to 90. So be careful, though, with how tall this thing is, because right now you can see that these two, based on how tight this curve is in that location, they're actually going from um, you know, sort of down to crossing each other than going back out. So you sort of have a limit to realistically how far back you can go on this one. So just be aware of that. But I'm going to lean it out for now. Um, kind of like this, I think, is enough. Um, but you can choose a side based on your curve. It's no big deal. Um, so now that we have two points, we can start to connect the line for the, the mass. And we're just going to build this wireframe first. So let's go to curve, um, primitive, and we're just going to do a line. We're going to say uh, we're going to go from the base divide points to the new point. That's this right here. So when I turn this other stuff off, like that, um, what we're actually doing is creating these curves that are going to be used as the mast for for my structure. Okay, so I'm going to lean it out about 25 degrees. All right, so that part was pretty easy. Um, you may still be catching up, but I'm going to move on to the next part too, which is the, the boom arm. So the boom arm, we can actually place where along the um, the curve our boom arm is being generated but what I want to be able to do is change where that is right so it's it's either going to be you know here or it could be down here or it could be up here I don't really know so anywhere along you know a certain length of that line so what that is is um, setting a point by parameter and parameters can either be um, by magnitude or by um, relative length, which is reparametrized. Um, I'll show you what that means. So let's go to um, curve analysis. And uh, let's go to um, yeah, horizontal. Let's go to perp frame. I think that'll be a little easier. So what this is going to ask you for is a curve to evaluate, and then it's going to ask you for a parameter on that curve. So we're going to plug this in here, um, and the parameter is going to take a couple different forms. Let's go to params. Oh, sorry, this is in um, curve analysis. Right? Yeah, perp frame. Um, so let's go back to params and let's go to input, I believe. No, nope, where was that? Hmm. I forget where the little parameter 
slider is. Where is this thing? Hang on a sec. Yeah, I am now. I paused it for a moment. Um, so we're just going to make our own because for the life of me, I can't remember what the other one is called. So we're going to make a slider that goes from 0 to 1.00 for now. Um, and let's plug that into T. So when it's at 0, you'll notice that it's aligned with the base point. But as you slide this thing up, it's going to slide up to the top. So that's because in this particular case, um, using perp frames, it is um, by proportion, because when it's a parameter, it's a domain of the curve that you're trying to define. Um, but there are also options like evaluate curve. I think evaluate curve will work this way. I might be wrong here. Let me double check it. And then there's two parametrize. And then I guess it doesn't need it. All right, well, anyway, it doesn't really matter because I think that this is the way that we want to use it anyway. So um, this gives us an option to create um, our, our perpendicular frames that are relative to where we want it on the curve. Actually, we could use it either way. But um, let me check. Also, what is it? Huh? Well, no, I mean, that's what we just made. But it's a different one. It's a different one that I was looking for. I just forget what it's called. Anyway, um, so what the challenge we have here is that we have to reorient these um, these frames because they're not really going where we want them to go. They're actually all sort of kind of facing the same way to an extent, except for this one that kind of cocked off to the side and it's looking a little different. So um, we have options. We can move and reorient the existing um, frame into this location and then we can sort of just use rotational values to get it to work the way that we want it because here we're going to We've got this sort of odd frame, but what we want is one that is like this, that we can rotate around, that is aligned to the rotation of our original surface. So we want it to be relative to this frame. Um, so I think actually, I'm going to change my mind here. Instead of perp frames, let's use uh, evaluate curve. It's just going to be a little cleaner, and it won't have extra frames here. Curve analysis, plug that in, plug this in. Okay, so we're just setting a point. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, reorient these frames. Right now they are aligned with the um, they are aligned with the rotation plane. So we can literally move these into place to be aligned with uh, with what we have here. Um, so let's go to, um, we could use move, or maybe I want to show you a different one. Okay, um, let's use line and point. So we're going to use um, line and point, I think, is what we want to use. So let's go to uh, the line that we're going to use, which is this, and then the point that we're going to use, which is the evaluate. No, it didn't work. Six, six. Line and point or co-linear plane orientation. Oh, that's right, because they need. Let's just go to. Um, Let's just move it. No, we can't just move it, actually. We want to use a 
Hang on. I'm forgetting what we were doing before. Um, so, guys, I dropped in, I think it was Origin, Plain Origin, which should literally just move it from where its original location was to a new location. Um, so it's going to ask you for the base plane and then the new origin of the plane, which, if you look at the type of information, is a point. So our base plane is this, and our, um, our, whoops, sorry, our base plane is this, that's our original perp frame. Um, and our origin is actually going to be these new points right here. So that reorients them so that they're in that particular location. So I'll turn this off for a moment. Um, turn that off for a moment. Turn the line back on. Sorry, whoops. Um, so now um, they are going to rotate with the um, angle of my line. See that? So in theory, um, we we don't necessarily need the um, axis to be exactly aligned with, um, like we don't need the y or the x-axis to be aligned with the line in order to rotate properly because it's just going to start with a default location and then give us another one, unless that's critical to your design. So if your if your parameters are critical, meaning I need this to be exactly however many degrees from that, then that's something you have to reorient the plane for, but for ours it's just whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave that down here for a moment so you can see what's going on. And uh, so now we just have to do the same operation. We're just going to create another point and then we're going to rotate that point in the, same, um, in the same position relative to this. So we have points that we created. That's these. We're going to move those relative to one of our axes, and then we're going to define how it's going to um, move again. So um, let's go to move. So let's go to transform, Euclidean move. And we're going to pick one of these axes so we can go to vector. Um, plane and deconstruct plane. And we're going to need an amplitude. So we know that the geometry that we're going to move is the list of points, which went up in the z-axis for now. Um, in this case, I'm going to start with the x-axis. So I'm going to say um, the x-axis is my vector. I'm going to plug that into g. I'm going to put a slider here for 0 to 10.0 again. So now it's moving out like that. Okay. So I defined some of that here. That's your rotator. I mean your uh, your move. Um, we created lines, and this is all just recapping what we've already done. It's a duplicate of what we've already done. So we created lines from the old points to the new point. I'm going to turn this extra stuff off. So now we've got two primary sliders. We have a slider that's defining the angle of the mast, and then we have a slider that's defining the length of the boom arm. So then we just go back and we do exactly the same thing again to rotate it. So I'm going to go back into intersect. I know I'm moving really fast right now, but this is all stuff that I've already shown you. So back into um, transform, Euclidean. We're going to say um, rotate in a plane. We're going to take the um, point that's being generated. That's this. Um, we're going to take the plane that we're going to use to rotate, which is this. And um, we're going to set an angle. So I'm going to go to math, trig, radians, and then a slider of, I'm not, this one I'm not exactly sure of, but I'm just going to say negative um, 90 less than 90 again. So now, if that's going to be our second point, we're rotating it like this. So these are our masts and boom arms. So in case um, you guys are still catching up, I'm going to leave this up for you, but I am going to clean it up. But before I do so, what questions do you have?
All right.